And so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's all give a big, big hand to Mr. Dodong Kakanando. Okay, mag magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Um, kanina ba, I was listening, I was overwhelmed. Uh, I'm before truly rich people and however, I am not a stock person. I am not also an internet person. I was asking my wife, ano generation ba tayo? Okay, hindi ko talaga alam. Uh, anyway, I was asked to share with you what we know about business. I uh, Let me just give you a, a little background. I used to work for HP. I moved my family in 1998 sa Bukidnon. Um, we have a unique way of doing business. Uh, I use the Bible as a reference for business and I use the plant as a model. Um, before I share with you my principle, siguro explain ko muna sa inyo anong pinanggalingan and why I did that. Um, we're not from Bukidnon. Uh, nung dumating kami doon in 1998, wala kaming kaibigan and kamag-anak. And the reason I left HP was because in 1997, I felt this very heavy burden from the Lord. He was asking me to leave the corporation. And in 1997, I started to argue with God. Sabi ko, leave the corporation in 1997. You see, in 1997, the Asian economy collapsed. And sabi ko, okay, God, if I leave now, where will I go? So for some time, I struggled with him. And he confirmed that leaving by, you know, one day I was jogging in our subdivision sa United Paranaque too. You may believe me or not, but I literally heard the voice and the voice said, leave. And so I struggled with that voice because I'm not a pastor, I'm not a priest, I was not an elder in any church. And so what I did, I asked God to confirm, um, to confirm that voice with a number of miracles which He did. And I resigned not because of Bukidnon. I really did not know Bukidnon then. I resigned because He answered my prayer in, in, in very many miraculous ways. And because I resigned, wala ko kaming pera. I forfeited my retirement. And we started our life in Bukidnon. Um, can, next, please. We started our life in Bukidnon in a container van. We converted in that into a house. And we lived there for some time. Uh, next, please. Okay, so we, that, well, that was our house for some time. We borrowed money from the family of my wife so that we could start a hog growing business. And I thought a hog growing business will make you rich. Then I realized something. Contract growing or franchising will give you a comfortable life, but it will not really make you rich because they basically control your income. My family, my wife, who, my wife and my daughter are with me now, my wife comes from a good family. And I ako sa kanya. Sabi ko, you know, I, I don't think I can give you a better house until 20 years. And this is our 20th year. 2018 is our 20th year. And ang struggle ko, you know, most of you think farming is easy. And I could not make the farm profitable. What I did, kasi alam ko hindi kami yayaman sa, hug, sa contract growing, I went into vegetable uh, projects. And I would, go in, I would go in that in a big way, tapos hindi siya kumita-kita. Sabi ko, uh, I was relatively successful in HP and was, I was managing many complicated engineers and I did well during the time. Pero ngayon, ordinary farmers, hindi ko siya mapakita. And my journey with the Bible started with that because every morning I would wake up scared. I don't know kung naintindihan yung feeling na pag nagkaroon kayo ng problema, wala kang matakbuhan. Ganun kami kasi wala kami kaibigan ka mag-anak. So I started reading the Bible because only I was looking for comfort. I was hoping God would comfort me. Wala kami jaryo, wala kami TV non. I would read the Bible in the morning. I would read the Bible in the evening. And then as I read, I discovered something amazing. I realized that the most successful business people in the past were actually in the Old Testament. The people we call prophets... They, ang naniniwala ko, hindi na alam na prophet sila, tawag lang natin prophet sila, but they were actually ordinary business people. And dayo sila, they did not have access to technology or information, but, uh, sorry about that, that should come later. But anyway, they did not have, have access to information, and sabi ko sa sarili ko, meron tong alam na dapat kong maintindihan. Okay? So sabi ko, sabi ko, dong wala nang mawawala sa iyo. Total wala na lahat eh. Walang mawawala sa iyo if you start reading the Bible as a business book. Um, please don't come around. Walang mawawala sa iyo kung, kung you read the Bible as a business book. And so I started to read the Bible as a business book. And whatever Bible says, I would do. 
I'm still not a pastor, I'm still not a priest, but what I decided to use it as an operating manual. And then amazing things started to happen. One of, one of the things we did was I, I, I followed what Bible said, dress the soil in the seventh year. And today we are pesticide free. Okay, we grow veg, vegetable pesticide free. And one of the reasons is we rest our soil in the, on the seventh year. Then I realized what God would teach in the Bible were not just spiritual law. They had practical meaning. Okay, nawawala yung peste if you rest the soil on the seventh year. And as I continue to do that, another amazing thing that happened, next please, was God gave us a better house in four years. So we moved, we moved from a container van to a better house in four years. God started to create miracles. And the same thing happened in our farm. Next please. Okay, this is the picture. Uh, can you freeze that for a while? Okay. Okay. And there, if you not free this, okay, anyway. Okay, can you put it back first? Okay. Uh, the next slide. Okay. okay. Have you been to Bukidnon? Anybody have been to Bukidnon? Diba? When you go to Bukidnon, people will say, Ang ganda ng Bukidnon, all green. Okay? And in the next slide, if you will not play the video, please. <laughs> okay. 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 This is the picture of our farm when we arrived in 1998. And when people go to Bukidnon, sabi lang ganda ng Bukidnon, all green. And I would often tell people, if that is the picture of Bukidnon, then I'll tell you Bukidnon is ugly. Pangit. Bakit? Because that's all kugon. And kugon is a symbol of desolation. What do I mean? Kugon can only grow in a cynically bad soil. Okay? Pag wala tayong ulan, we'd be a desert. And that was the kind of land that we arrived at. Okay, ganyan lupa namin. And madaling patayin ng kugon. Patabain mo yung lupa, kugon cannot survive good land. And ang totoo kanina, as they were playing the video, kindly play the video, this is not my land. This is my neighbor, and then they've been like that for the past 20 years. This is our farm today. We've reforested it. Okay, we've reforested it. Inside is our piggery. We grow high-value crops like lettuce, uh, cucumber, and carrots and other things. We have goats, we have sheep, we have many things. And the uniqueness namin, hindi kami humiram ng pera. We grew that internally. Okay? And siguro, the reason they asked me to share with you how to break through in business is, I cannot, I cannot tell you how to get rich in stocks. I don't know stocks. However, I can teach you how to break through in business. So in 2000 and... In, next slide, please. In 2014, friends started to ask me to write a book, to put my story in book form. And I, I agreed because I wanted to preserve the story for my children. I chose the title because I believe it summarized my story of how God took us from a position of need to a position of relative abundance. I like what Truly Rich is trying to do. They're trying to help you create breakthroughs. And I really believe you're all here because you're looking for breakthroughs. Am I correct? Yes. You know, when I was writing the book, I said, this cannot be my story because it's impossible for me to create all these miracles. And I said in the book, this is God's story, His story written in our lives because He wants to let you, all of you know He also wants to create a breakthrough in your life. And I said in the book that the God who was alive during the time of Abraham is still alive today. However, if I say that, sabi mo, how come I don't feel in? And ang rason, we call ourselves a Christian nation. And yet often, he would be the last person we go to. Pag marami tayong maling desisyon, sinubukan na natin lahat, pag pumalpak na, then we go to God. And often, God cannot reverse anymore the things we've done. Ako, I, I, I've been studying the Bible now as a business book and so I'd like to share with you the principles I've discovered that which, that which turned our life I realized next slide please I realized that the purpose you choose to pursue in life will determine how you live of course uh, brother Bo calls it your why ako I call it my purpose so nung nasa HP ako akala ko ang purpose ko is to retire rich and enjoy my family when I moved to Bukidon akala ko ang purpose ni God para sa akin is to live simply and deprive of many good things in life and besides sabi ng pastor and pare di ba? blessed are the poor 
Di ba? Inisip ko, siguro that is the blessed life that God wanted me to have. However, as I read the Bible, I realize there's nothing blessed about being poor. Okay? There's really nothing blessed about being poor. And I want you to know that God wants you to have a breakthrough, to really live in abundance as Jesus desires. As I was searching for my purpose, I was asking God, what do you want me to do? A simple verse, next slide please, spoke to me. Okay, and the verse is in Genesis 1.28, sabi niyan, God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Are you familiar with this verse? Um, is it a popular verse for us? Actually, hindi. At a certain point in our history, you know churches do not often talk about this. At a, but a certain point in our history, it became very popular when they were debating in Senate kung ipapa, ipapasa ang RH bill o hindi. Di ba? The church said, we cannot, we cannot pass on the RH bill because God said in Genesis 1.28, magpadami ka ng anak. And I noticed, Filipino Christians are very disobedient. What do I mean? Pag sinabi ng gobyerno, you, dito, ito pedestrian lane, ano gagawin nyo? You make your own, di ba? Pero yung command na magpadami ng anak, we're very obedient. I think it's our favorite command. Si, si Rafi lang kanina, di ba? Sabi niya, nine sila. Yung lolo ko, ang anak ng lolo ko, 23. Kasi yun ang belief, magpadami ka ng anak. And that was what I thought it, the meaning of that verse before. God explained this verse to me after four years of being a farmer. And when I saw this phrase, kay next slide please, when I saw this phrase, imbis na bata ang nakita ko, ang nakita ko tanim. Of how a plant started to grow from a very simple seed, and then namunga siya. And I realized this verse is very, very important because it was the first commandment God gave. You know, to a leader, there are two important commands. One, the first, because it tells you what you want you to do. Then the last, huling habilin. And this was the first commandment. Many of us do not realize that it was the first commandment. And when I saw the, the idea of the plant, I realized God was giving us a model of how to live our life. And that's the reason why I've been studying the plant ever since and modeling my business according to it. So before I share with you my principles, gawin ko muna is to share with you something about the plant. Is that okay? Okay, next slide please. The first thing I realize is that fruitfulness is a function of a plant. It is not a function of man. Let me explain. Pag ang tanim kain ng kain, ano nangyayari sa tanim? Tumataba, di ba? Tapos namumunga. Kayo, pagkain kayo ng kain, ano nangyayari sa inyo? Tumataba rin kayo. May bunga kayo? Yung tanim, di ba, may bunga yun. Tawag sa sobra ninyo, tawag doon bilbil. Di ba? And hindi nyo pwede pamigay yun. Now, if fruitfulness is about making children... The command was given to both man and woman. So there, wala naman sinabi sa mag-asawa eh. So tanong ko, bakit pwede, babae lang ang pwedeng manganak? So kung the command was given to both man and woman, dapat pati lalaki pwedeng manganak. So tanong ko sa mga lalaki dito, sinong gustong sumubok? <laughs> you know, maski magpa-sex change kayo, hindi kayo manganak. Diba? And I think that's the irony of transgender, diba? Nag-change ka, lalaki ka pa rin kasi ka pwedeng manganak eh. Because God designed you that way. So, fruitfulness is not the function of, a, of, of, of man. It is the function of a plant. Let me show you. Next slide, please. A plant starts life from a very simple seed. When you put it in the ground, the tubiga, na initan, it starts to go through a process called germination. It will now use the food inside the seed to form a few roots and a few leaves. And then the food will run out. The plant now has to shift to another process called photosynthesis in order to grow. You know, one of the amazing things that I discovered in a plant, when a plant is germinating, linagyan mo ng fertilizer, mamamatay ang tanim. I discovered that by a lot of trial and error. Mamamatay ang tanim, pag linagyan mo yan ng maraming fertilizer or maski anong fertilizer, and then I realized it is true in business. Pag ang negosyo, binilisan mo kasi linagyan mo ng maraming pera, namamatay ka agad. The, plant, the roots represents the plant's ability to absorb nutrients. 
its ability. Karamihan sa atin sa negosyo, naniniwala tayo, kung gusto mo palaki ng negosyo, lagyan mo maraming pera. And karamihan ng negosyo na nakita ko nagsimula ng maraming pera, mabilis mamatay. The truly, the truly big businesses today, SM, Gokong Wei, Apple, Microsoft, they started literally with no money, $1,000 in, 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 in a garage. Wala yung pera. Now, why would those businesses grow and hindi yung malaking pera? Because the roots, the ability to absorb, to manage. You know, we go to school thinking that if we are educated, we can succeed in business. I discovered that school only gives you knowledge. Narinig nyo na phrase, knowledge is power? Uh, 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 um, Kani kay, kay Ernie Baron? Pag may knowledge, may power, di ba? Do you agree with that? Ako, I discovered it is not true. Because knowledge is useless if you do not know how to apply it. What, what school gives you are theories. And it does not tell you how to really apply it because they cannot teach you everything. So, people go to school, get a lot of money, start business with a lot of money, and then they collapse. I have a, a lot of friends like that. The reason why I was losing money in the first four years of my life, because I was doing that, I was trying to drive my business with a lot of money, and I would lose them. And so I started to change my approach. I realized that to the plant, roots are the most important part. And so yun ang una pinapalaki ng tanim. So next slide, please. So the plant, as it grows, will go through a sub-stages of growth. So una niya papalaki yung roots. The roots will get food from the ground, give it to the leaves. The leaves will make food through photosynthesis, give it to the roots. And it will go through that process for some time. Wala kang makikita ang bulaklak o bunga. Bakit? Kasi nagpapalaki siya ng roots. Because the roots decide how big the plant will grow and how profitable it will become. The bigger the roots, the bigger the shoots. Only because of the concept of photosynthesis. Water comes from the ground. So kung maraming water, lalaki yung shoot. In most businesses, we try to grow sales. We fail to grow infrastructure. Ang inuuna natin benta bago yung loob. Ang tanim, inuuna niya yung loob bago yung bunga. So it will go through that process for some time until the proper season comes. Have you heard of that phrase? The proper season to the plant means hindi na lalaki yung roots. Pag huminto lumaki yung roots, hihinto lumaki ang shoots. However, during the time, ang dami-dami niyang ginagawang pagkain. So what will, now, what will it do now with the food it's producing? Next slide, please. It will now store it in a container called the fruit. It's just a storage container for excess food. Do you know that plants do not work for its fruit? They are product of abundance. They are natural byproduct of a healthy plant. So what am I saying? As long as the plant is healthy, fruit's automatic. Then I realize also it's the same in business. The reason why I could not make the business profit when it was starting, because ang, pro, ang focus ko profit, I was not minding the people in the farm. Ang mindset ko, pag kumita, then I can mind the people in the farm. And I realize it's wrong. Okay? So, if you want a plant to be fruitful, do not focus on the fruit. Focus on growing a healthy plant. Then I say also, if you want a business to be profitable, do not focus on the profit. Instead, focus your energy on growing a healthy organization because a healthy organization will produce profit. I know to all of you are now have this goal. You've been, you've been trained to become truly rich, which is good. However, most people, ang focus, yung riches na makukuha. They don't understand that riches is just a result of doing the right processes. And it's good you're being trained today. But if you're going into business, the same, is, the same is true. Profit is a natural byproduct of doing the right thing in a business. I cannot teach you what to do or what to do in your business now. We have other trainings. But what I'd like to share with you is the mindset that we've discovered. The mindset that will help you create a breakthrough. When I was trying to understand what God wanted me to do, in the next slide, 
was trying, uh, now I started to analyze the Bible and see what's the right formula. In Genesis 1.28, nakita ko, sabi niya, fill the earth. Then sabi pa niya, rule over it. And so we all have this tendency, pag magninegosyo tayo, we want to be the biggest. We want to rule the earth. We want to rule the world. In fact, yung mga, mga bata, pag nag-graduate, anong goal? Change the world. And it's basically because of that concept. Meron akong kilala sa Cagayan de Oro. I was coaching this boy. And ang produkto niya, Silvana. Alam mo Silvana? Di ba? Sabi ko dun sa bata, what's the goal? Sabi niya, rule the world. Sabi ko, ah, Silvana lang, rule the world kagad. No? Pero we all have that ambition eh. Okay? Pero as I was trying to study, is that really what God wanted me to do? I saw something weird that He did in the second chapter. Next slide, please. In the next chapter, it said that the Lord God planted a garden towards the east in Eden, and there He placed the man whom He had formed. Ang weird sa akin, there was this earth that has just been created. And sabi ni God, rule over it. And the next thing He did was plant a garden. Do you weird yun? Why not release man? So, next slide please. So, ang tanong ko, why? Started to ask, why did he start man in a garden? And then, meron pa siyang ginawa in the next slide. Meron pa siyang ginawa. Sabi niya, out of the ground, the Lord God used to grow every tree that is good for food and pleasing to the eyes. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So people would say, if only God did not put those trees there, man would have not sinned. Agree? So, so, sino ang may kasalanan sa kasalanan ng tao? Si God, siyempre, di ba? And we can always blame Him for everything, di ba? However, I'd like to point you to a, a, a verse, okay? It says, in the midst. Now, ano in the midst? It means that those trees were not in a special location. Those trees did not also mean that they have special fruit. Para bang sinabi ko, two of you now represent the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are they better than the rest of you? No. They're just ordinary. Wala naman sinabi si God. They're special siya. In a sign lang. Now, hold on to that thought because it has of important significance to what I discovered and what changed my life. Okay? So there were those, 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 those two trees. In the garden, what did God expect man to do? In the next slide, God revealed what He wanted man to do. Sabi dyan din, the Lord God took man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. Now, what does it mean to cultivate? Next slide, please. Cultivate is a bad in Hebrew. It means to work. It even means to slave, to be a slave to the garden, to work it. Now, pasensya na kayo, I always analyze I'm actually an engineer. So, tanong ko, sabi ko kay God, why do you need to cultivate a perfect garden? Well, when God creates something, he makes, it in, he makes it very nice. Why do you need to cultivate a perfect garden? I answered the question by asking another question. I asked myself, what happens to the garden, a perfect garden, when the caretaker continues to take and not replenish? What happens? It becomes barren. Do you know that that's a story of our country? Next slide. This is because Christians do not understand the role. We call ourselves a Christian nation and we continually been getting, not replenishing. Most of you are now in Manila and kanina no, si Anton was talking about opportunities and all the opportunities are here. But there are a lot of opportunities outside. Pero problema, nagkatasan na natin, nakuha na natin. And so you go around some of you have land. You don't know what to do with them. Okay, feeling nyo walang binigay sa si God and so often the best thing we can do is to sell land. Sayang naman. Why is work important? Why is cultivating necessary? Because all the cultivating can convert this land to the next slide. The next slide is to this land. You understand? Work is very powerful. You know, Kayo, you always talk about investing. There's nothing wrong with investing. I, I would, I, I'm not an investor, I'm not a stock person, but I have my own investment. Nakumbinsi ako ni Rex Mendoza. Kung hindi ko lang nakausap si Rex Mendoza, hindi ako maglalagay ng mutual fund. Anyway, so I have. Pero, 
What do you invest pag hindi mo pa napalago kung ano meron ka? Maybe your job, maybe your business. And the problem is, many Christians believe that work is part of the curse God gave man after his sin. Now, that is not true. Bakit? Kailan ba naggumawa ng kasalanan yung tao? Genesis 3. When was the command to cultivate given? Genesis 2. So, ibig sabihin, even before he sinned, he was asked to work. Bakit? Because God channels blessing through work. And I'll show you that mamaya. In fact, there's a verse in Thessalonians that said, If you will not work, you should not eat. And tayo, mga Pilipino Kristiyano, we feel so guilty pag hindi natin pinakain ng tamad. We feel na hindi tayo Kristiyano. Do you know that God will not feed them? According to the Bible. So work is very, very important. It will allow you to take the little that you have and grow it. Now, stocks are good. Mutual funds are good. However, do you know that it is faster to make money from business? Let me explain. We grow pechay. Or my lettuce na lang. My lettuce, I spend 20 pesos per kilo in making them. I spend 100 pesos. I, I sell them for 100 pesos. Can your stocks give you that? No. No. I'm not against stocks. I am for it. However, when you do business with what you have, it's faster. And often, we want an easier job. We don't want to take care of our land. So that's something I want you to consider. Work is very powerful. It can take the little that you have and grow it. Para siyang tanim. Yung, yung tanim always work to convert the little food that they get from the soil to something bigger until they create a breakthrough. Then in Genesis chapter 15, in the next slide, God also said something. Sabi niya, keep it. The word keep, next slide please, the word keep means shamar in Hebrew. It means to protect and also keep instruction. Now why, if God gave that, if God gave that garden to man, why did he ask him to keep instruction? Why did he give him commandment? Now comes the two trees. Next slide please. So let me explain why those two, two trees were there. In verses 16 and 17, sabi, the Lord God commanded man saying, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Next slide, please. You shall not eat, for in the day you eat from it, you will surely die. Ulit kayo, balik, balik ako. Why did God put those trees there? To explain to you, let me present to you an analogy of what it means. I hope someday you visit us in Bukidnon. Wag lang sabay-sabay. Mamumulubi ako pag nagsabay-sabay kayo. Pag pumunta kayo sa bahay namin, papakainin ko kayo. And normally, in a Filipino setting, buffet, di ba? Mamili ka ng gusto mo. Do I have the right to tell you, ito pwede mong kainin, ito wag mong kainin? Do I have the right to tell you? I don't have the right? Can I tell you that? What, what right do I have? I'm the owner eh, di ba? Now sabi mo, narinig ko mabay itong kopol na to eh. Subukan ko nga kainin yung hinindi nila. What will I do? Ha? Palayasin kita. Bakit? Bastos eh. Di ba? Pinakain na nga. Ginalaw pa. Now why were those trees there? They were actually symbolism. They were not there to tempt you, man. They were there to tell man, next slide please, that God remains the owner. This is one of the most important mindset that I have acquired. The reason why I always failed in business before, you know, in HP I was trained, make plans, ask resources from your boss. So I carried that mindset into the business that God gave me. I would tell God, Lord, here's the plan. Please bless me. Now, you do that only if He is not the owner. So I did, hindi ko winaldas pera namin. Kaso lang plano ko. When I realized God owns the business, nagbago tanong ko. Ang tanong ko, Lord, anong gusto mong gawin sa pera mo? And I believe God will always tell me, padamihin mo muna bago natin gastusin. While some of you are now rich, some of you are struggling. Yung, yung sweldo ninyo parating ubos. 
na pag a 15 and a 30 you always save your money sa SM sa Ayala di ba they always have sale bakit na ubos kasi pera mo eh di ba i have the right to spend this kasi sa iyo ako today i always ask god lord tung pera ang binigay mo para sa to and i read my bible today i still read my bible every day i wake up by 5 in the morning I open my Bible. I now let God talk to me. Then as I talk, then, uh, then I talk to Him. Ang tanong ko parate, anong, anong plano mo? Hindi plano ko. Siya may ari eh. So kung siya may ari, dapat plano niya. And things started to change. If God is owner, who am I? Next slide please. I am steward. And I realize in the parable of the talent, are you familiar with the parable of the talent? In the parable of the talent, God was telling us what He wants us to do. Sabi niya, for it is just like a man, Jesus was explaining life in His kingdom, for it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted, next slide please, and entrusted to them his possessions. And to one, He gave one talent, uh, five talents, to one, two, and to another one, each according, next slide please, each according to his own ability, and He went on a journey. Sabi ni Jesus, life in my kingdom is like this. I will entrust all of you talents according to your ability. Talent here is not singing talent. When I checked, it was money. One talent is worth 15 years of a laborer's salary. So if the, the salary today is 400, one talent is worth 3 million pesos. So apparently, these guys are not laborers. They are still slaves, but they are called stewards. So sabi niya, he gave to them according to, your, to their ability. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever asked God at a certain point in your life, Lord, bet ganon? Bet mas marami kang binigay sa kanya kaysa sa akin? Have you ever asked that? Have you ever compared yourself with others? And sometimes you feel God is unfair. Nag-gumastos ka, gumastos ka sa college, nag-MBA ka pa, tapos yung high school mas mayaman sa'yo. Di ba? O si Henry C, hindi nakatapos ng college yun. Okay? Mas mayaman sa'yo. And then, grabbing investment mo. Mas... I have a friend here in Manila. Ang trabaho niya palengke sa Libertad. Naka-short shirt parate. Naka-puruntong shorts. Naka-puting t-shirt. When I was in HP, I would always be in nice clothes, nice shoes, with a computer. Yung kaibigan ko, ang take-home noon, Malinis sa malinis, take home na, araw-araw, 9,000 pesos sa palengke. Hindi ko man lang natanggap yun nun. And yet, engineer ako. So, tanong ko, anong pinagkaiba namin? Ang sagot, abilidad. Yung kaibigan ko, pag may pumasok na baboy sa pwesto niya, walang lalabas yung pati kuko, alam niya anong gagawin sa kuko. And I'm not kidding. Ako, ayoko man humawak ng madumi. Pero, HP ako. Mas marami siyang pera. Anong pinagkaiba namin? Abilidad. Di ba? Katulad na lang yung iba sa inyo, mga lalaki dito, sabi mo kay God, Lord, bet ganon? Bet mas maganda asawa niya, mas pogi naman ako. <laughs> Alam mo, sabihin ni God sa iyo, sabi niya, anak, akala mo lang yun. <laughs> da? But truly, God has entrusted, Alam mo, when, when I came to Bukid nun, I told God, Lord, di ba, pinaalis mo ako sa HP, I left a good paying job. Why is this the kind of land you gave me? Bakit yung iba kong kilala na hindi ka naman sinusunod mas maganda? I'll answer you that later. Okay? So God has entrusted us with talents and abilities. Okay? According, talents according to your abilities. Now, how do you now, dapat kung gusto mo mas maraming talent, mas maraming ability mo. So, anong dapat mong gawin para dumami ability mo? Meron tanong ako sa inyo. Sino sa inyo gusto maging magaling na negosyante? Anybody? Okay, magaling na magaling. Okay, very good. I'm happy. Sino sa inyo ang nag enjoy pag may problema? Anong nangyari dun sa gusto maging magaling na negosyante? Hindi nyo ba alam na kaya magaling yung mga yon kasi marami silang na-solve na problema? Kayo, nag-aral kayo, then you expect walang problema. Now, do you know that problems are very important in business? Bakit? Because only problems give you the opportunity to convert knowledge 
into ability. Knowledge has no power. Knowledge must be converted to ability first so that it will give you power. And only business and problems convert that. I don't like problems, but I embrace them. Okay, every time problems come, I ask myself, ano dapat mong matutunan so that I grow ability? So when you have talents, you have many things. No? Let's not talk about investment, your resources. What does God want you to do with what you have? Next slide, please. There's a parallel parable in Luke. Parallel meaning parehong prinsipyo. Iba nagsabi. Sabi niya, sabi niya, and he said a noble man went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. And he called ten of his slaves and gave them ten minas and said, what does he want you to do? Next slide, please. Sabi niya, do business with this. In some Christian community, they believe business is evil. Business is not evil. Business is, some, is from the Lord. He wants you to become fruitful by doing business. And there's nothing wrong with doing business as long as you know how to do it properly and when you get rich, what to do with your riches, which I will explain later. So what did I discover? This is my purpose. Next slide, please. I realize that God has entrusted all of us with talents according to our ability. And then God, next slide please, God wants us to do business. He wants us to take our ability and do business. Every time we do business, we will encounter problems. However, every time you solve problems, ability grow. Remember the roots and the shoots kanina? Roots first, shoot after, roots first, shoot after. Every time you create something, you will encounter problem and yet you grow in ability. This is the most important part in business. Growing ability. And then the proper season will come. What is the proper season? Next slide, please. You become fruitful. What does it mean to become fruitful? To become fruitful means to have more than enough so that you can be a blessing to others. Do you like that kind of life? Like, like, like the, pero minsan, Pilipino, kaya hindi tayo maging blessing sa others, sa ibang tao, kasi when we have something little, we don't use it. When we grow it, we spend immediately the profit. We don't even wait for it to grow. And then when we, we become rich, what do we do? What do we do? We take the money, bring it elsewhere. Spend it in another country. Ang tawag ko dyan, renape natin yung Pilipinas. Ginatasan mo. Okay? Now, think about this. If all Filipinos will take what they have, do business when they have extra, start to bless others. Do you think we will be poor? Why does God want to make you rich? God wants to bless you. God wants you to create a breakthrough. However, sabi ni Rafi kanina, di ba? What's, what is why? He wants to create, to produce a lot of money so that he doesn't have to live. I may agree. But there's another higher purpose for that money. God wants you to be a blessing to others. Now, what is the power of being a blessing to others? Do you know that when you start to bless others, they bless you in return? I live in the mountain and merong NPA sa amin. Do you know how I protect myself? I bless the barangay. Pag merong maunang mag-bless sa barangay, ako yun. So ano pa pang-bless ko sa kanila? Yung sobra ko. I cannot use my operating funds. Yung sobra ko pa pang-bless ko. So what will the barangay do to me? When I am threatened, the barangay protects me. You understand that? We are created to be fruitful so that we can bless others. When you start blessing others, they start blessing you in return. So I discovered this in my life and in my business. Next slide, please. Business is about growing abilities so that God can give us more opportunities. We have been trying to accumulate knowledge. We have been borrowing money to, be, to do business. Wala silang silbi pareho if you do not grow in abilities. And most of, most, some people napaso sa opportunity because of this concept. Opportunity knocks only once, so therefore, grab it. Tapos napaso kayo. Ba't kayo napaso? You grab an opportunity na hindi mo alam paano gamitin. Okay? I have this principle in our foundation. I say, opportunities, they come to those who are ready. At a certain point, we became the biggest lettuce supplier of McDonald's in the, in, in, in the country because we were growing our abilities. 
And yet, I did not have any agriculturist. I want you to know that as you grow your ability, God rewards the faithful. Next slide, please. Look at this. Yung merong lima, sinoli kay God sampu. Yung merong dalawa, sinoli kay sa master niya dal, apat. Okay? Now, look at this verse. Sabi dyan, His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Did the master take back the money? Did he? What did the master do? Gave more. Can I tell you something very important that I've discovered? Do you know that God doesn't need your money? Some of you would like to work hard and you tell God, Lord, bless me, Lord. And then if I go one, hati tayo, Lord. Imagine hati lang, kanya naman yon. Diba? And then you struggle with tithing. But could be begin si God? You, you, you pray for you pray that God will make you rich. And when you are rich, sabi nyo, bakit? Kasi feeling mo sa'yo eh. Okay? God doesn't need your money. What God is looking for are faithful stewards who will take the little that he gets, that God wants to give him, grow it by his ability, and when meron ng sobra, go bless others. And gusto lang niyang pang bless mo, yung sobra. Hindi yung kailangan mo. I like that kind of concept. You know, one time I was asked by somebody, that means don't you don't believe in sacrificial giving? Sabi ko sa niya, I don't. First of all, it's not mine. You know, it's not mine, it's the Lord. And secondly, God told me to grow it so that I can bless others. Even if I give all my money today, Tomorrow, meron pa eh. Bakit? Nagtatrabaho ako eh. I continue to work eh. And that's the kind of life God wants us to have. If God will bless the faithful, let me show you what He did to the third slave. Next slide, please. And the one also received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Can you next, press the next slide? Reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent on the ground. See, you have what is yours. Sabi ng tao, the reason I did not excel, I don't like you, boss. Eh. So wala siyang ginawa. Okay? On the other hand, did the first two slaves know that the master was hard? Did they know? Ako, I, I think they know. The master was the same person. Di ba? They know that the master was hard. When is the master hard? Pag hindi ka nagtrabaho. Pero the master was reasonable. Meaning, pag nagtrabaho ka, he will reward you. Pag tamad-tamad ka, you will be punished. Di ba ganun naman lahat ng boss? Nakakita na kayo ng boss na sa, nung hindi ka nagtrabaho, sabi, okay lang yun. Next month, wag ka magtrabaho ulit ha. Sisweldohan pa kita. You know, most of you complain about your bosses. You prayed that God will give you a job, that God will give you opportunity. When God gave you something, say, Lord, I don't like my boss. Can you give me another job? That's what He gave you. Eh. I don't believe bosses are, un- bosses are unfair. They're reasonable. Kailan ka napapagalitan? Wag hindi mo ginawa yung trabaho. Di ba ito? Hindi niya ginawa trabaho, kaya siya napagalitan. Pero I have another question. What di- uh, anong kasalanan itong taong to? Did he steal the money? No, he returned it back, di ba? Di ba? Winaldas niya? Hindi rin. So ba't siya napagalitan? Do you know he was not called a sinner? Instead, he was called another term. Next slide, please. Sabi sa kanya, but his master answered and said to him, you wicked, lazy slave. Now, for you to understand the meaning of what the master said, intindihin natin ano ang ibig sabihin ng wicked. Ano ba ang root word ng wicked? Weak. Ano ang weak? Yun yung mitya sa kandila. That's a weak. Di ba? Ano ibig sabihin ng wicked? You have a twisted mind. May sira bait mo. Oh. Sabi, may sira bait mo. Bakit? Imagine, binigyan ng pera, binigyan ng negosyo, pag napalaki, may reward pa. Di ba may sira bait mo? You're given a chance to grow and be, have a better life. Hindi mo ginamit properly. You are wicked and lazy. I don't know you. But I believe some of us are in danger of being called wicked. Binigyan ng trabaho ni God. Nagrilik sa trabaho. Lord, bakit ito binigay mo? 
meron kayong lupa in ibang resources and you are not using them. Linibing mo. And then you always complain to God and ask, tell God, Lord, why did you not give me enough? Do you know God, what God will tell you? He will tell you, anak, hindi mo paginamit. How can you ask for more? Anong tawag sa atin? Wicked and lazy. May sira ang bait. I'm not kidding. Many Filipinos are like that today. They don't maximize the return of what they have. And then we complain. You know, I really like what Truly Rich is doing. I really like it. They, they give you the opportunity to become rich in investment and mutual funds and stocks. But how about your resources? Have you been using them properly? Or have you been neglecting them and telling God, you have not given me enough? God will tell all of us, you are wicked and lazy. So I hope you consider that. God has given you so much. We should not be poor. We're one of the country with so much resources. Unfortunately, the Filipino Christians believe that work is part of the curse. It is not. It is part of the blessing. Next slide, please. Sabi ko sa inyo, the purpose you choose to pursue in life will determine the way you live. Then I discovered. Next slide, please. But the way you view your God will influence the way you pursue your purpose. So ako, as I do my business, I have this mindset. Next slide, please. First of all, I believe God is owner. That everything I have, galing sa Kanya. And that's what this verse is saying. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. The world and those who dwell in it. But on the other hand, God is Father. Next slide, please. This is my favorite verse in the Bible. Sabi niya, then I said how I would set you among my sons and gave you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of all the nations. And I said, you shall call me my father and not turn away from following me. I like that idea. God wants to give me a pleasant land. However, in the beginning, He gave me barren land. Paano nangyari yun? I realized the reason why God gave me barren land, because if He gave me very good land, I will not know how to work. I will not know how to grow. You notice, pag marami kayong pera, nagnegosyo kayo, you start spending on things you do not need. Ako, because wala kaming pera, I have to make do with what, I, what we have. We became very, very creative. And one of the driver na kaya ako creative is a person na kasama ko, my wife. You see, misis ko, ayaw umutang. Gusto ko umutang, ayaw niya. So sa bahay namin, madali ma-resolve yung ganyang conflict. Sabi ko sa misis ko, pag ayaw mo mag-submit, ako mag-submit. Oh, di, di, tapos ang problema, di ba? Because I decided to follow, I became very creative. And that's the reason why we, can, we produce a lot of things in the farm. Now, if God is owner and father, who am I? Next slide, please. I am steward and child. He gave me barren land. Maliit. Kasi it is important for me to grow ability. Because I am a child, He does not want to destroy me by giving me something I cannot handle. And ganun din kayo. Many times, God, uh, today God has given you only enough because He wants you to grow ability. Because He knows money can destroy you. When you become truly rich, I hope you use your money properly. It is for His purpose. As I close lang, to, I discovered, next slide please, I discovered that the purpose of business is to become fruitful. To become fruitful means I take the little that I have I work it, I grow my ability until I have more than enough. And then I go bless others. But the main issue in business, next slide please, is growing abilities. That is the main issue in business. So I focus on, oh, I, I focus on growing ability with all my problems because it will bring me a fruitful life. Like the plant. Let me show you what has happened to how we cultivated and keep our garden. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, let me show you our farm. This is our farm when we started. It was basically barren. Next slide, please. We grew hogs for Monterey. The hogs have a lot of problems. Daming manure niya. Araw-araw. And the problem ng hog, hindi mo mabenta yung manure. So what did I do? Being a steward of the Lord. I started an operation. Next slide, please. I have a that operation. I have a lettuce operation. Today, we are pesticide-free and we have develop other crops like next slide please 
from, from the ordinary iceberg lettuce, we've developed other crops. As we earn from this, I started to develop other things. Next slide, please. Started to buy goats and sheep. Okay, next slide, please. So started to use the money now to develop more abilities. Next slide, please. Do you know why I have ducks? Kasi yung aming baka from the hindi marunong kumain ng lettuce. Yung sa, so bumili ako ng duck tagakain ng lettuce. So pag andun kay sa amin, sabi ko, magpaihaw ka ng duck. Ah, social, di ba? Pero tagakain lang ng lettuce yan. Because I'm a steward. Next slide, please. As I end, I wrote two books. And I brought them with me just, just in case you want them. This is our story. It contains the most important principle I've discovered. These are the principles we use. Can I share with you a personal dream? I wish all Filipinos would read it, not because of the money I will get. I wish all of us can experience the breakthrough that God wants us to have. I wish all the best for Truly Rich. You're doing a very a fantastic job. But I wish you would also consider the resources that you have. I'm part of a foundation. Next slide, please. Similia sa kinabuhi. It means seed of life. That's where we do the training. We're now trying to pass on everything we know. Why? Because these principles are not mine. They've always been in the Bible. In our foundation, I say we have no copyright. Basta you just copy it right. Okay? Okay, next slide. I don't have a card for all of you. This is our contact information. If you're interested in our training, okay, we have a Facebook account, Similia sa Kinabuhi. I have a fan page account. And these are my contact information. I'd really like to thank all of you for bearing with me. I'd like to thank uh, Brother Bo for giving me the chance to share with you. I pray that you will all become fruitful. I really believe it's the way to make this country great. So maraming salamat to.